Real love comes in many shapes and sizes. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 movies with honest depictions of love and relationships. I was trying to protect myself, you know, because, you know, because we've both been married before, and you know how things can turn out. And before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at films with realistic portrayals of highs and lows associated with romantic relationships. While the premise and visual style are important, the focus is more on the flick's tone and emotional heartbeat. Please note that spoilers will be included for some of these entries. Number 10, Juno. A film that spoke to an entire generation, Jason Reitman's sharp comedy tackles the sensitive topic of teenage pregnancy while throwing in a surprisingly genuine portrayal of puppy love. Because you're like the coolest person I've ever met and, and you don't even have to try, you know? I try really hard, actually. While the pregnancy storyline does not seem too preoccupied with realism, Juno and Bleecker's confusing relationship hits nearly all of the right notes. Largely depicted as a witty and in-control teenager, Juno's complex feelings for Polly Bleecker leave her feeling vulnerable, so she pushes him away, but then gets upset when he moves on. You have no reason to be mad at me. I mean, you know, you broke my heart. I. I... I should be royally ticked off at you, you know, I should be really cheesed off. I shouldn't want to talk to you anymore. Terrified of the responsibility that comes with parenthood, the married couple who plans to adopt Juno's baby is also pretty relatable. You know, I'm just I'm thinking if this is the right thing. What are you talking about? Just wondering if it's... just wondering if we're ready. Number 9, The Big Sick. And I know it's only been a few months. But I just wanted to tell you, I am overwhelmed by you. It's the last thing I was expecting. Comedy and tragedy are just opposite sides of the same coin. And this is rarely more apparent than in the 2017 rom-com about a couple from different walks of life. The central conflict of the Big Sick rests on Kumail's reluctance to get involved with a non-Muslim partner, as this goes against his family's wishes. So what does your mom think about you and me then? She doesn't know about me, does she? No. Whether questioning if a blooming romance is worth the risk of being disowned, or trying to move past a mistake that put a serious strain on a marriage, the big six relationships go up against genuine issues that cannot be solved by a sugary declaration of love. I look at all of this and I just think, you know, I just can't do it again. And I, I can't, I can't so be the reason that you don't have a family. Number eight, La La Land. Sure, the characters may occasionally break into spontaneous song and dance numbers, but the feels are all too real. A stark left turn from 2014's Whiplash, Damien Chazelle's La La Land pays homage to Hollywood musicals of yesteryear. But beneath all the fancy lights and jazz tunes, there's a simple love story between two aspiring artists who cannot quite balance their personal and professional lives. Maybe you just liked me when I was on my ass because it made you feel better about yourself. Are you kidding? Bolstered by Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone's natural chemistry, La La Land is a tour de force that suggests happiness still has a place after heartbreak. I'm always gonna love you. I'm always gonna love you too. Number seven, Lost in Translation. I'm trying to organize a prison break. I'm looking for like an accomplice. <laughs> For better or for worse, love tends to be associated with explosiveness, especially when a budding relationship takes center stage. Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation subverts expectations by replacing passion with melancholy, while sprinkling in just enough hopefulness to not be too depressing. You know there's nothing 
more than this. Despite coming from completely different backgrounds, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson's characters are drawn together over a shared taste for apathy due to being stuck in turbulent relationships. I'm stuck. Does it get easier? No. Are these two in love? Mm, maybe. But Lost in Translation's brilliance rests on the nuanced depiction of longing and repressed romance. And while we don't support the movie's potentially stereotypical portrayals of the Japanese, it does have a realistic love story nonetheless. Number 6. Like Crazy Yeah, do you want to come over? <laughs> come over now, and uh, I'll just be here. <laughs> Even though love can overcome most trials and tribulations, apparently immigration laws are not one of them. Inspired by the director's own personal experience, Like Crazy sees Anna and Jacob's blooming romance cut short by Anna overstaying her student visa and getting banned from entering the US. I don't want you to feel like you're not living your life properly. When, when we're not together. Separated by thousands of miles and a steadily growing sense of frustration caused by the rift, Like Crazy is an occasionally sentimental but always entertaining love story that shows a realistic portrayal of the challenges faced by long distance relationships. What have you been doing? <laughs> love. Waiting for you. Have you been sleeping with loads of people? Yeah. Number 5. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind If only I could meet someone new. I guess my chances of that happening are somewhat diminished, seeing that I'm incapable of making eye contact with a woman I don't know. If there is one writer capable of blending the surreal with the heartfelt, Charlie Kaufman would be that person. With a premise revolving around a company that erases memories, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind ventures into sci-fi territory Nevertheless, anyone who has endured a bad breakup should be able to relate to the movie's emotional core. Yearning to erase his last relationship, Jim Carrey's Joel undergoes the procedure but starts regretting the decision once the relationship's more positive memories are targeted. Don't ever leave me. Pretty. 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 Please let me keep this memory. Just this one. Weird, but oddly beautiful, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is ideal for hopeful romantics with broken hearts. I could die right now, Clem. I'm just happy. Number four. Blue Valentine. Call me stupid. I'm so out of love with you. I've got nothing left for you. Nothing. 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 There is nothing here for you. There is nothing here no, for you. I don't, don't love you. I don't I don't. Don't say you stuff you can't it. take back. You Young love is intense, overwhelming, and feels everlasting. Unfortunately, marriage requires a lot more than just passion. Aptly titled and opting for a non-linear approach, Blue Valentine juxtaposes Dean's and Cindy's struggling marriage with moments from the couple's promising earlier days. You always heard. Caught in a whirlwind of hormones and feelings, Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams' characters decide to start a family after Cindy gets pregnant. But life's responsibilities gradually put a strain on the couple's rushed romance. Blue Valentine is far from an easygoing watch and offers no clear cut solutions but that merely allows the story to resonate more with viewers. This is how you wanted to grow up? I don't want her to grow up in a home where her parents treat each other like this. <laughs> Number three, 500 Days of Summer. I love the Smiths. Sorry? I said I love the Smiths. Relationships are not always fair. Occasionally, one person is simply more in love than the other, and that's nobody's fault. Told from the perspective of Joseph Gordon-Levitt's Tom, 500 Days of Summer is a witty but poignant depiction of romance that was destined for failure, despite the protagonist's sincere efforts to make things work. We're just... What? We're just what? 
Just... No, don't pull that with me. Don't even try to... Usually depicted as a joke or an obsession, movies rarely tackle unrequited love in a way that is respectful to both parties. However, 500 Days of Summer avoids presenting either Tom or Summer as the bad guy. You know what sucks? <laughs> Realizing that everything you believe in is complete and utter bullshit sucks. What do you mean? Uh, you know, destiny and soulmates, true love and all that childhood fairy tale. Number two, amour. Arrête de m'observer. Je t'observe pas. Bien sûr que si. Je ne suis pas encore idiote à ce point. Hailing from the director who blessed the world with the brutal funny games and the creepy cachet, Michael Haneke threw critics for a loop with 2012's Academy Award winning romantic drama about love, life, death, and responsibility. Led by two towering performances from Jean-Louis Trintignant and Emmanuel Riva, Amour sees an elderly couple dealing with the aftermath of a stroke that leaves one member paralyzed. Tu n'es pas obligé de me tenir la main tout le temps. Je suis capable de m'occuper toute seule, tu sais. Et n'est pas mauvaise conscience. Ce serait absurde et pesant pour moi aussi. A deeply human experience that toes the line between heartwarming and devastating, Amour feels almost too real and may hit a bit too close to home for anyone who has gone through something similar. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. All I ask, Brooke, is that you show a little bit of appreciation that I just get 20 minutes to relax when I come home instead of being attacked with questions and nag the whole damn thing. You think that I nag you? That's all you do! I don't know what the rules are, and I'm sure I'm breaking them, but uh, I, re I really miss you. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. You see? That is just like you, Harry. You say things like that, and you make it impossible for me to hate you. Number one. The Before Trilogy Richard Linklater's minimalist but ambitious set of films comment on many different forms of relationships, and the same couple is at the center of each one. I'm gonna take your picture. So I never forget you, or, uh, or all this. Starring Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, Before Sunrise finds the passionate but inexperienced young adults pondering the meaning of love and opting to live in the moment even going as far as to not exchange names or phone numbers, while Before Sunset sees the couple reuniting in Paris years later. You know, maybe we're, we're only good at brief encounters walking around in European cities in warm climate. <laughs> With potential and lost love firmly traversed, before Midnight focuses on the issues associated with long-lasting relationships as intimacy gives way to familiarity and a fading spark. Will you be able to put up with me for another 56 more years? I am looking forward to it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.